Welcome back for Syndication. This is that today we're going to be talking once more on an update on SNDL Sundial Cannabis. Make sure to drop a like to this video to help this channel grow, subscribe, and leave notifications on. My previous video is in the description below. Let's jump right into this one. Broken this video, as usual, due diligence, update, and technical analysis. If you would like to skip towards the technical analysis, go ahead. Now, coming on towards the due diligence part, of course, we've been covering it quite extensively, especially in the last couple of weeks and even before around November. Uh, Sundial here has its last offering closings. Well, not last, but the most recent. There was two. This one here is $74.5 million. This leaves them a bit north of $170 million total between the $100 million offering and this one here, 74.5. And that really raises their cash substantially. Now, generally speaking, they have almost enough money there to go ahead and pay off their debt uh, and really change up the game for them in terms of expanding towards the U.S. once that kind of market opens up for them. Now, generally speaking, um, that, enough, that money is totally enough for the debt. And looking back into their financials here on Yahoo, we get to look into their financials. And last thing in the quarterly balance sheet, we get to see that their current cash previous to this offering was around 21 million. Now their total liabilities is 151. So they have enough money to pay off their total liability. Plus having around uh, a little bit hard math to do there, but around 40 million in spare for their future operations and towards their uh, US expansions if they think to do that. Now income statement here, you get to see the net income is around negative two hundred and ninety eight thousand dollars per quarter now this is actually uh in thousands so generally speaking in terms of 2019 that was around negative 200 million uh in last quarter you're looking at negative 71 million so yes they are burning through cash like crazy um, and that probably enough money to cover them for the next couple of quarters or so so they are really much in trouble in order to try to fix their uh Pay, sorry, fix their entire balance sheet. Now, of course, the total assets is still massively uh, it tied into inventory there, around 59 million, or that was in the last year, around, sorry, 31 million there in terms of inventory. Total liabilities, as of we're speaking, is 151 million. So, moving on forward, we have an idea that they have a bit of troubles there with their balance sheets. The balance sheets need to be improved. If you go on back to the presentation, this was way back in November. They did mention that they are going to be doing some changes to uh, lower the cost of cannabis as well as it try to increase their sales. So that is actually previously mentioned in their uh, SEC filings as well. So for instance, cost saving highlights here in their own presentation a while ago, quarterly cash use for operations decreased 69% from 14.3 million to 5.3 million. So we can expect that kind of change to happen. Uh, so quarterly, it would be somewhere around 5.3 million. So that extra 40 million would last them around eight quarters. Way better than the numbers we've seen. Might, no, the numbers might be actually very accurate on the yeah, finance, keep that in mind. Dry bulk cost per gram sold for Q and Q decreased 12% from 1.3 grams to 1.18. So lower cost, lower quarterly cash used, and uh, lower corporate headcount uh, exp expenditure by 58%. So generally speaking, that's amazing. Now it comes to the question about institutional buyers. Institutional buyers seem to be a little bit on the mixed side. Some of them have been pulling out. Uh, I don't think that that is related to anything in general about them being bearish. A lot of them have now and then especially at average shares of somewhere around 36 cents, you might expect for them to at least take their original investments back. That's what all investors do, but these are usually big corporations and they have different focuses. Sometimes it could be by other positions that they have to close this position, generally speaking. We already covered the $75 million additional to the $100 million in terms of their total cash raise or tag capital raise. And then regarding here, this... Uh, SEC filing, this is regarding around uh, the warrants for the purchase, around 14 million warrants, uh, consisting of 60.5 million shares. This, this entire SEC filing, including of that uh, warrants purchase of around 30.25 million, uh, around 14 million pre-funded warrants, things that are usual. You don't need to worry about that. That's $100 million I was talking about earlier. And now comes on towards legislation. So this is a uh, an article from The Hill, I kind of missed it, but I found this to be interesting. 
and really talks about Chuck Schumer. And I'll go on and I'll tell you why I'm talking about that later on next. With Missouri leader Chuck Schumer, now the first head of upper chamber ever to publicly support ending federal marijuana prohibition, he's made several commitments or yeah, commitments on multiple occasions advance legislation to repeal the federal criminalization of cannabis. Further, he has previously introduced his own standalone legislation, the Marijuana Freedom Opportunity Act, which strikes cannabis from the list of banned control substances and laid groundwork for the creation of the House Passed Marijuana More Act and Expungement Act, which is the More Act. But Chuck Schumer is not is not alone in his support for repealing the federal cannabis. Uh, we give you there a list of actual people who are in support for it. And then now moving on towards this news that we received uh, four days ago. Schumer hosts the first marijuana meeting to formulate 2021 federal legislation plan. So the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, uh, Senate Finance Committee Ron Wyden, DOR, and the Senator Cor Booker. Now remember one thing. Finance committee. That's where the it's committee. Finance committee is that, that's where the more actually say. So it's awesome. Heard from a group of advocates stakeholders as three papers on field draft from legislation in the early part of this year. So there's other legislations coming on towards the marijuana legislations. And that is huge because that really shows that uh, the advancements there. At, for instance, here ID Health Medical uh, Marijuana Activists approved for signature gathering and legislation. There has been this actual uh, marijuana momentum website is very interesting. It gives you a little bit of good updates. Geo Congressman recognized the marijuana legislation's reduced demand for illegal parts. I, I found like almost everything they sent here is probably an easy PR to be uh, used by some people to invest in SNDL. Now, the more act again, it's stuck in the Senate of Finance. Now, before moving on towards technical analysis, please make sure to actually subscribe and leave notifications on. It really helps my channel quite a lot, more than you can even imagine. Now, going on towards the technical analysis part, looking into here where we get to see on a one week perspective, things are still looking really good. ADX is not even bound for a pullback above 30, above 50. It's 37.52. That really just shows that there's very, very, very strong uh, movement here. Momentum looks really good. Uh, it looks like it's at 141. MACD looks like it's stable. William Percent R is a bit overbought, so that's a bit of a dangerous level. You get to see the 10 SMA is finally an attempt to cross the 30 MA. It's touching there, and that is looking amazing. Moving averages are bound to be all bullish by this week. Now, on the one-day perspective, we need to look at things around and see, well, do they actually play as nice as the one-week perspective? Now, on a one-day perspective, we get to see that the ADX is actually, in fact, above 50. It's been above 50 for a while. That is normal for such move. MACD looks like it's actually breaking out even further more. William Percent R looks really nice, and Momentum looks like it's above 1, or just touching 1. So that is an amazing thing right now. Then SMA is above 30 May, your bullish trading action zone where positive reverses are likely. It's between 109 and 85 cents. 50 SMA is above the 200 SMA, and that looks amazing. Now, one thing to actually look at this uh, just before we move forward, I probably will mention it once more. Count on how many days has it been above a dollar? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We are three days away. If Friday closes above one dollar, then Thursday and Wednesday, it regains compliance, it doesn't even need to do the reverse split, and that March deadline that is a little bit looming regarding a reverse split is no longer applicable, and that is a really bullish thing to have right now. Now, on a two-hour perspective, things are looking even better. Uh, you're getting to see that everything is pointing that there is a breakout currently. The ADX is showing that there is a very strong trend here at this level. 10 SMA is above the 30 MA and the price point is above the 200 SMA. Now, the bullish trading action zone where positive reverses are likely is on the two-hour perspective, 139 to 127. So we get a little bit off, uh, more of a bounce layer here. It previously looks like it actually been playing through nicely. So things are looking really good. Now, on the moving average band. Now, the moving average band hasn't been really well with this one, but every time it does drop within the moving average band, it jumps back up. So that's something interesting. So 96 on the top, 87 on the bottom, and 79, in, uh, sorry, 87 in the middle and 79 in the bottom. You can expect if it does drop around 79, it can bounce pretty fast. You get to see this one here around the 40, uh, around the 50 cents before, around the 50 cents around here again. So that seems to be as well another strong support. Now, stochastic fast and stochastic slow, we get to see they're both showing that there is another leg up in this game, and it's not done yet. Now, on the previous Fibonacci retracements, I did play with this one here quite a while. 
and you get to see this is actually uh the i believe well this is not the 100 percent line this is actually about 100 percent line but we're gonna go ahead and draw it again from 175 down to the 50 cents we get to see a fibonacci support at 148 127 112 97 79 49 significant resistance is at 175 now this is previous ascending triangle that I actually drew before uh, and you get to see this actually played really nicely through so that is something that is really nice to see happening now we're going to go ahead and find significant supports and resistances the old-fashioned way which works perfectly for us as well 159 is the current significant support below there 141 below there we're looking at 130 below there you're looking at 122 below there a very very strong one at 110 101 93 72 68 62 and 50, 57 now if we were to go back not year to date but we have to go back almost a year ago we can try to find some significant resistance lines one of the most significant one that we're going to have trouble breaking is the dollar 99 219 262 this one might not be might not have a lot of trouble 323 another one that is going to be a troublesome part would be 383 389 to around four bucks and then from there 520 from there you're looking perhaps at 766 towards 831 towards 883 now comes to the question to end what do you think is going to happen with this one if you were to tell me around let's say last year about this company yeah things were going bad went from 1322 down but just generally speaking i've seen a lot of crazy ha things happening this year so can this even hit two bucks you know i've seen a lot of things happening this year so i expect it to actually hit two bucks at this point um there's been a lot of crazy penny stocks that went from 20 cents down to like 30 bucks so things are going crazy for penny stocks and at least this one has some material to actually move forward and not just a sympathy play um, and that would just multiply just because it's a sympathy play this is actually moving on its own uh, alongside with the actual marijuana industry but it actually still has uh, legitimacy now generally speaking i think that if i was to spit a high uh, price target that i want to look into it and would actually like to see that it's probably four dollars now is it likely i would say it's not impossible if i was to give between a one zero to 100 percent chance i would probably give it around a uh, 50 60 percent chance um, just usually i would give it around 20 percent. so even though 50 50 sounds uh, pretty much like a guess but i do believe that this one has potential has another leg up we'll probably see a bit of an extension it's a bit scary in terms of investments especially with their cash burnout rate but i definitely think that they have more bullish things coming on their way what do you think about this sticker make sure to down in the comments below sure subscribe and like you have a wonderful day